And there were some exclusives on the PlayStation that were bananas. So PlayStation would have to be third. But I would think overall, my favorite game system of all time is probably the original Game Boy. All right, so right over here we got, uh, I put this in alphabetical order. This, this is sealed up here. It's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Game Watch. Uh, then you got some sealed Star Wars handhelds from a company I've never even heard of before. It was called Micro Games of America. Never heard of them. I don't know if it was, and it still has a KB Toy sticker up there, which is kind of funny, um, which is cool. A Turtles Wa Game Watch. I had that as a kid, uh, and when I saw it at some game store out in New York City, I had to get it. It's brand new. Uh, and some Tetris, like I said, Tetris handhelds. These are cheap. You can buy these, I think, at like uh, Books a Million or something. Not Books a Million, well, uh, Barnes & Noble. Uh, this is the Mortal Kombat 2 one-up machine. I had to get this. Uh, we shouldn't say Mortal Kombat 2. It's all three of them, 1, 2, and Ultimate, but... Uh, I had to get this. This is uh, uh, one of the things that I, I needed when it came out. I actually have another one that's brand new that I'm trying to sell in the uh, in the living room there. All right, right up here we got some more Tiger Electronics. This was two bucks, brand new. Konami Live. I don't think it even works anymore because the the online thing is gone. Uh, but I, for two dollars, brand new, I, I said screw it. It's two to two dollars. What am I gonna buy? My chicken? I could buy that. <laughs> um, right over there, we got some. I got the MLB The Show uh, Gun Yard Editions and, and Special Editions. Virtua Cop 2 boxed with the gun as well. That's a sealed Guitar Hero Live for the 360. I bought that at five below for five bucks, brand new. And then some random stuff up there. You got some Crash Bandicoot figurines and Sonic and, and Parappa the Rapper and all that. These two bookshelves here, these are pretty much, I'm trying to collect every DC and Marvel game I can, <clears throat> along with the shows. So for example, like this is, this here, this is called Gotham City Cereals. Not cereal like you would eat, cereal like S. And it's the complete 1940s movie serials collection. So this is before Adam West was Batman, which is kind of which is kind of cool. Um, Batman was played by Lewis Wilson. Never even heard of. I don't even know who that is. Some of you guys who are Batman fans will know. But then you have the Adam West complete series. But then I'm you know, like for example, Batman for the NES, Game Boys, Genesis, uh, Batman Return of the Joker, Game Boy, Genesis, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we go to, we even have the GameCom Batman and Robin sealed. Um, and then we go from Batman into Lego Batman, into the current Batman games, all the way down to Blade and Captain America and Fantastic Four and so on and so forth, all the way down the line. We got some, bud. these are Funko, the cereals, these are the figurines. I don't know, for some reason, Batwoman... They made her head too big for her feet. She doesn't stand up. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. So I'm kind of pissed that she has to like lie there like yeah. that. Uh, then we go into Marvel games right down here. And everything's mixed in, but it's in alphabetical order. And down here I have box cereals. Like I have a rule where I buy two of each, I eat one, and then I keep the other one sealed uh, in a plastic case. Huge Pac-Man fan. I don't know how to explain it. It's just Pac-Man is one of those games where I get bored of it real quick. But I just love it. it. It doesn't make any sense. But so I have the like the uh, Dollar General, um, you know, plug and plays. Like yep. you got the Pac Man, the Miss Pac Man. You got the stuff down there. That last thing down there, that Radio Shack computerized arcade. Okay, this is a pretty cool story. I think when I was a kid, I had that. Okay, and I got my mom so pissed off at me one day that she took it and just over her head like like Gronkowski spiking a football and just <laughs> smashed it on the ground. No kidding. <laughs> and I think she, oh, she was livid at me. And uh, I forget what I had done, but it was something bad. And uh, and it shattered into a million pieces. Oh, wow. And I bawled my eyes out. And I think she realized what she had done, but she wasn't going to admit she made a mistake. She was never going to do that. But I think I could see it on her face back then. I could see it on her face. She was like, oh, crap, what did I just do? There was no you know, reason for that. My mom passed away in 2010, and uh, I was at a flea market, and I was looking for games. It was the first time I'd gone to this particular flea market and couldn't find a thing. And I'm about to leave, right? And I happen to look behind me, and there it was. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking to myself, was, you know, as, I don't want to get ridiculous, but was my mom looking out for me that day? Is like, like, 
to put thoughts in my head to just turn it. Because had I not turned around, I would never have found that. Right. But it's boxed. It has the body. It's, it, this, this came out in like the late 80s, early 90s. For it to be boxed like that is, is something else. All right, right over here, this is the Mario wall. This is the Mario slash a mascot wall, I should say. And basically what happens here is you got all the stuff up there. You got the Sonic and the Crash, Pop, Funko things. I don't really collect Funko... Uh, uh, pop figurines, but for I make exceptions for mascots. Um, Spyro, Skylander, sealed for the PS3. I got some Monopoly, Mario games, which I actually really don't need. Uh, but anyway, as we go down, these are all complete in box Game Boy games. Now, one of you guys may be asking, well, why do I evaluate there? Why do I have baseball there? Why do I have um, Game and Watch Gallery as an example? Well, Mario's in those games in some capacity, and so I'm trying to collect every game that Mario has ever been in Nintendo on up, and then we go into Game Boy Color, and that, that translates into Game Boy Advance, which you can see on that second shelf down there, and uh, Virtual Boy, and then we go into DS, Original NES, Super NES, N64, GameCube, uh, Wii, and then Switch down, down at the uh, bottom. These are some... Uh, Sealed, I got on Facebook for like five bucks each. These e-reader things for the DS, or for, excuse me, for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, so I put those on the wall. This is my setup right here. I have a capture on my laptop that captures gameplay. I have a PSVR that's just sitting here. I gotta at some point play Beat Saber, but I haven't had time. That game is fantastic. Retron Five, which a lot of people are going to comment in the comment section. You're a cheater. Yes, I'm a cheater. But it's a lot easier than hooking up every single system. Yes, it is. Uh, so it is what it is there. I don't really care. Uh, right over here, uh, right now I'm playing PS4. These are the games I'm playing right now. I have a season right now in MLB. Madden, obviously. I'm so far behind in my gameplay that I still have to... I'm in the middle of a storyline of it of last year's NBA game. The brand new one just came out. Hockey. Mortal Kombat 11. This game pissed me off, and here's why. Aside from the fact that I hate the story, the fact that trying to collect everything in the crypt is almost impossible, and they purposely, this is what they did, they purposely made it impossible to get everything on the first go-around, mm -hmm. because you need a certain key to be able to unlock certain doors, yeah. Oro's Lair, and all over the place, and the problem with that is they purposely made you one short, so what you have to do is you have to go back and spend some gold, or whatever it's, uh, the coins, to turn back time which now means you have to go and try to find where all, and it doesn't tell you what chests uh, go back in time and have stuff in them, so you have to literally go around Shang Tsung's Island to try to find all the ones that replenish themselves just to get that last key to be able to open the last go-around on the first try. I'm not a fan of that. Wow. I hated that. It's, it's ridiculous. Dead or Alive 6, um, beat this. Not a great game. I'm pissed because Dead or Alive is one of my favorite fighting game series. Um, Dead or Alive 6, and then the, 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 I forget what mode it's called, but basically it's like a story mode. Yeah. Um, I can't do one of the, it's, a, it's like the fourth mission, your bass, and you have to do this throw. And for some reason, and it shows you how to do it, like the directions on the screen. You can't do it. And it pissed me off because I can't finish the, the mode without doing it. There's nothing worse than trying to play a game to try to beat it. And know that if you can't beat it, your like the brain will explode because you can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then Odyssey. This this game I probably thrown three hundred plus hours. Wow, into. that's impressive. It's, it's so huge. Um, right over here, I got the Smart Boy thing. I bought this at a bookstore. I thought it would be a good idea to be able to play Game Boy games on my cell phone. I think what happens is you put the cell phone in this little holder thing, and then put the you're using your cell phone as the screen. So you have the game in the back mm -hmm. of this. And the cell phone's a screen. I don't Does know it work? Exactly. It's brand new. Haven't oh, yeah. That's haven't interesting. Had a chance, haven't had a chance to even try. Let's see. Uh, Nintendo Switch carrying case, a backpack. Down here, we got some old Game Informers. I got an NES Classic. This whole box is filled with stuff that I'm trying to sell. Uh, so if you want to check out my eBay store, it's Andy Kate Bear. Just go on to there. Current Game Informers. This is extra stuff. I have some box Game Boy games that uh, I have duplicates of. And some miscellaneous electronics and loose games down in there. If we go over here, this is the second Nintendo wall, or second mascot wall, I should say. This uh, girl who I used to work with, her boyfriend is an artist, and he drew that for me. I said, can you draw Mario, Sonic, and Spyro? And he did. That's awesome. So, yeah, I, I think it's sick. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. is Antoine Adams. 
and I'll shout them out. You can, I think, find them on Instagram at the Garden Samurai. So check that out. This is a lenticular Super Mario thing where depending on how you look, it, it changes its picture. I got that for like five bucks. F1 Race, the only reason that's not in the regular Game Boy section is because of the type of box that it came in with the four-player adapter. Uh, Mario, I got the Mario movie, and then the Mario TV show here. And then we got Sonic. We got everything Sonic. We got handheld Sonics. We got all the way down into Spyro. So that's the mascot wall. Right over here is Mortal Kombat and Tekken and Prince of Persia. I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan, like I said. Some of these are rare uh, to find. As an example... This, and I only collect U.S. version of games, but this was a um, exception I made. This is Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 for the original Game Boy, the double pack. It only came out in Europe. Wow. You can see all the gibberish in Europe right over here. But that's rare to find complete, expensive to find complete. Uh, Mortal Kombat for the 32X, a lot of people like this. This one's sealed. I happened to get it for $35 brand new at one point. That's awesome. I don't know why they were on a sealed game. They put that sticker on there. Yeah. I'm pissed about it. That sucks. <laughs> That's stupid as hell, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, all the way through Mortal Kombat, there's some games a lot of people don't know that came out, like Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance for the Game Boy Advance. Not saying they're great games. They suck, but they're there. Tournament Edition, this is sealed. This, I got a lot of... I was lucky. A lot of... I think I talked to you about this earlier. Um... Back when I started collecting, Amazon had a lot of these games for $20 or $30 brand new. And now they're triple in price uh, because you can't find them new anymore or they've gotten rarer as time has gone on. Got some Mortal Kombat handhelds, as you see right there from Tiger. I'm missing a Sub-Zero Mythology one. Now, right here in the middle, this is from Geek's Line. Uh, Geek's Line created this Kickstarter-funded thing where you could buy an anthology book series along and depending. You could just buy the book. You can even find these on Amazon now. But the systems were custom made by some French artist. I don't know the name offhand. I don't think I can pronounce it. But those are there. I have the 64. I have the PlayStation 1. I have the GameCube at the bottom. Can we uh, see those on camera real quick? Yeah. This here is a Zelda-themed N64. That's the beautiful. guy painted. And it's numbered on the bottom here. This is number 5 of 5. PS1 one. This I'm not really a fan of. Uh, the way they did it. It looks... Just, I don't know. I don't know what to what to say. It's about very, it. um, yeah, I, yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah, and then uh, GameCube down here. This is a Star Fox um, GameCube. Yeah, that's he, nice. Uh, I yeah. like that. Star Fox. Yeah, I think that's the best one on. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, and then down here we got some Nina Williams, some Tekken things, but more more importantly, trying to collect every Prince of Persia game that's ever come out. I finally got Prince of Persia for the Genesis. Not rare at all, just couldn't find it in the wild. And all the way through, you got Tekken. So. Nice. All right, as you come along, you got more Mortal Kombat stuff up here. Mortal Kombat sealed uh, Tiger Electronic game. Uh, Mortal Kombat uh, plug and play. And then here's where the uh, games start to, the, you know, the other games start to come. You got an NES, got a Super Nintendo, as you guys can see. We got the, this box, this is just the box. I wish the system and the controller were in there, there it's not. But it's a Toys R Us limited edition variant. I have classic edition, one sealed, one open. SNES, I have two of those, one sealed, one open. Uh, and then over here, just regular Game Boy games. Now, some of these Game Boy games, I'll give you guys a. You guys are trying to collect for the Game Boy. I'm going to give you some games to, to try to find. I wouldn't suggest some of these are expensive as all hell complete. So if you're trying to go complete, Get ready to cry, but <laughs> money-wise. But if you just want to get loose, you should be good. Adventures of Star Saver by Taito. Hell of a game. Music is one of the best in the video game I've ever heard. Um, it's, it's just a great game. Basically, the story is you're this boy, and your sister gets kidnapped from aliens, and some robot guy rescues you and sends you to the alien planet and you and the robot team up to try to save your sister. That sounds pretty cool. It's either your sister or your girlfriend. It doesn't really... I, I forget which it is, but it's a great game. What kind of game is it? It's uh, So it's like a running gun in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you have the robot. You get to shoot your robot gun at the enemies. Uh, boss battles are pretty cool and memorable. Um, you guys, I think you can check out on my on my Let's Plays on my channel. I think I have a Let's Play of that. So you guys can check it out, but that's a hell of a game. What was the name of the game again? Uh, the Adventures of Star Saver. Cool. Uh, that's a hell of a game. Um, let's see what else we got going on. Double Dragon, shitty on the Game Boy, terrible, 
Double Dragon 2 is a little bit better, not by much. Dr. Franken, if you like puzzle games, Dr. Franken is a, is a cool game. It has great music. Uh, basically, you're Frankenstein, and your girlfriend got shattered into a million pieces along um, in the mansion that you're living, and you got to try to find all of her missing pieces to put her back together. Hmm. Again. This is pretty cool. This is the King James Bible. Um, I like to collect every Bible game I can get, mm -hmm. and this is one of them on the Game Boy. This happens to be a sealed copy, um, and it was made by Wisdom Tree. So that's like literally a Bible? It's not a game? Correct. Huh. King James Bible for use on the Game Boy. Uh, you get the entire KG, King James uh, Bible. Word search, simple or complex, and two Bible word games. So, hmm. And these were sold in Christian bookstores. Really? Yeah. Let me see. I just don't want to... All right, let's see. Micro Machines, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's see what else we got. Pyramids of Ra, great music. It's a, another puzzle game. Basically, think of like, you know that paddle with the ball attached to it on a string? Yep. Well, Pyramids of Ra is sort of like that. You're a ball, and you have to jump onto each platform in a, to get to the end of the platform. And as you jump, the thing that you jump on falls down. So, like the ledge. So, yeah. like if I'm on a ledge here and then I go over here, the one I was just on doesn't exist anymore. So, it's a pretty cool puzzle. Huh. Penguin Wars. Hell of a game. It's like a dodgeball kind of a game as you play as penguins. I think your buddy um, liked penguins in the last video or something. Yeah, like that. Uh, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry, that's one of the games you should try to get. I think I might have commented to him to try to find that. Penguin Wars for the Game Boy. It also just got released on the Switch as I think Limited Runs released it. Oh, which yeah, I was, yeah. I was pumped about yeah. Revenge of the Gator is a great pinball game. Pinball Fantasies is a great pinball game. Um, Sumo Fighter, very rare game, one of the most expensive games on the Game Boy, upwards of $2,000. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Sumo Fighter, not a great game, not a horrible game, but basically it's like a kung fu game. You're a sumo fighter and you got to save your girlfriend and you got to, you know, it's like a beat em up kind of a deal. Uh, let's see what else. Ultima, here we go. Ultima Ruins of Virtue. So that's the this one. This is huh? the game. Now, when I was a kid, looking at this cover, you're like, okay, well, shit. You got a sword, this guy's ready to kill you, and this looks like a mage. And I'm looking at the back, and I'm like, okay, right? Um, but it's very, very cool game, very funny game. Things that you click on um, that you can read, like text-based stuff, and it, it has a lot of dry humor in it. Um, but I end up buying, I haven't played this yet, this is the second one. The second one is rarer than the first. Um, I like the front cover. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It is. And uh, I also now, because of that game, I eventually want to play. I'm trying to collect every Ultimate game there is. Yep. Uh, which I have a lot of. I think I have all of them on the NES now. Uh, word Zap. Uh, fun puzzle word game. Uh, Wordtress, obviously. So that's really Game Boy. As we get into Game Boy Color, some of the uh, titles that um, are notable that I haven't, I haven't played these, but Deja Vu 1 and 2. Game Boy Advance, obviously the NES Classic series is stuff that, you know, every collector needs to have. If you have a Game Boy Advance, you have to have these. The, you know, it's basically the poor man's black label for the NES, but they re-released them on the, on the Advance. Crazy Taxi's not a bad game for the Game Boy Advance. It's all the way down here. I have Final Fight uh, 1. That happens to be sealed. I got a hell of a deal on that, 20 bucks. It's worth 100 I think, now. So Final Fight 1, I uh, got a good deal on that. It's $20, brand new. Uh, it's... it's quadrupled in price since then. Um, but yeah, adva advanced games, it, basically there's a lot of shovelware. Game Boy Advance is one of the first systems that had a ton of shovelware. Yeah, Nintendo did. DS was worse. Yep. Way worse. And the Wii. And the Wii. And the, Wii. And the DS and the Wii were basically brother and sister. Yep. It's basically what they were. Um, and so because the D, even though I have games on the DS, I had to get them for the Wii and vice versa because graphically they're different. Right. So I had to make an ex uh, uh, exception for that. But anyway, a lot of these Game Boy Advance games happen to be sealed uh, because they're games I'm probably never going to play, but eventually if I do play, I know loose copies will be a dollar. Yeah. Like Kids Cards or M&M's Break em or something. <laughs> so, M &M, so every mascot kind of a game I have to collect, like M&M's or um, Cool Spot, as yep. an example, or yep. Chester Cheetah or whatever the case may be. These are six Mega Mans I'm trying to sell. If anybody wants them, you can contact me. Uh, six is complete. They're all complete, but six is sealed. And then we get into DS. DS goes all the way up here. A lot of shovelware. What do you mean by shovelware? Learn chess. Learn geography. Mm -hmm. Learn math. That sort of stuff. All that stuff, though, I have to buy. Uh, for my collection, at least. Then we get to the NES. We got some 3DS over here. 
I want to have more 3DS games. I'm going to, but I, I'm waiting on the list to release, so I know that I, I don't buy duplicates of stuff, because right now I don't have something that can track right. it. Uh, NES. I'm trying to collect every black box uh, game for the NES. I'm a few away. Um, let's see. Blades of Steel is a classic game. If you haven't played that for the NES, you have to. It's a hockey game. Even if you don't like sports, it's one of those games where anybody can get into it. Arch Rivals. I remember Arch Rivals as a kid. The actual arcade version was at mm -hmm. some community center I used to go to. And uh, I fell in love with the game back then. It was like the first NBA Jam before NBA Jam became what it is. My friend has a uh, Arch Rivals arcade, yeah. like the big arcade. Uh, Bible Adventures. I think I got this at that GameStop or GameStop at that game store that you uh, you go to Blast Tech Machine Shop. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, in Cleveland. Yeah, I yeah. got this sealed there for a decent price. Uh, Contra. Obviously, you got to have Contra. I'm trying to collect obviously every Contra game there is. Contra uh, Rogue Core, Rogue Core, Heart Rogue Core. Uh, that's the new one. That's, that's new out. one's coming out yep. for the Switch. Yeah. Yep. So um, I got that pre-ordered. Uh, Ninja Gaiden. Every Ninja Gaiden game. Uh, the only reason I have this Metroid, I'm not a Metroid, never played Metroid before, um, but the reason I have this Metroid is because of the cover variant. Oh, yeah, the yellow, um, the the yellow, yellow one. one yeah. I, 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 I know it's not worth as much as the original, but because of the cover variant, I had mm -hmm. to. Um, every Pac-Man game, like I said, I'm trying to collect. Uh, let's see what other NES games that are, that are good. we got Contra, Double Drow, the Three Double Dragons. Uh, Gauntlets, Gum here, Gumshoe, Gyromite, Hogan's Alley. Some of these are in really good shape. I got a Sega Pico here that you might see. I got to mm -hmm. eventually open this up. I got this for twenty bucks. This whole collection of Pico stuff. Uh, and again, we got more NES games as we go. We get the Super Nintendo. Nothing really uh, to write home about aside from Contra Three: The Alien Wars. Um, but again, some of the same stuff like Pac-Man and Griffey Baseball and. Here's some Ultima. Here's Ultima, the False Prophet, and there is those Ultima games down there. N64. I'm close to getting what I need to get for the N64. One of the games I used to have is the Sculptor's Cut, um, but I didn't have the manual. I just had the box in the game. Is that the expensive one? Yeah. The rare one. Yeah. I had the box in the game. I bought it at a store out in New York. Uh, it was like 1,200 bucks for the box and game just by itself. Ooh. And I said, all right, I'll figure out the manual. The manual is like a third of the price of the, both of them combined. Wow. So the problem is I was like, well, that's ridiculous. So I ended up selling and made a little bit of a profit on the game, uh, which was good. But at some point, I'm going to need to collect it. So I think I saw one on eBay right now for two grand. So it's just gone up in price. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. Um, but some of these, like Gauntlet Legends, hell of a game. 1080 snowboarding, classic snowboarding game, Banjo and Kazooie. I like Banjo and Kazooie. I like Banjo Tooie, but now the new Banjo games, I don't. I'm not into. They're all weird and stuff, and you, it's not a platformer like it used to be. It's it's just weird as as. as, as Are you well. talking about ukulele? No, not ukulele. Are you it's, talking about nuts and bolts? Well, yeah, that yeah. stuff. It's yeah. just not. It's, I agree. It's you know, I don't know what they're doing there. Uh, Elmo's Number Journey, Elmo's Letter Adventure. Those are must-haves. Um, being sarcastic. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, all the Hang Time games, obviously. Blitz Special Edition. This was a rent, a blockbuster exclusive. Not as rare as Clay Fighter, but yep. still up there. Um, but yeah, all the Pokemon Puzzle League, Ready to Rumble Boxing are classic games as far as like fun games to play. There's Wetrix. And then we go into the Switch. Okay, now a lot of these games for the Switch um, are games that I'm probably not going to play, but because of what they are, like mm -hmm. Air Conflicts Collection. This Air Conflicts Collection. That's oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that existed. Oh, there you go. So yeah. you got Air Conflicts Collection, but it's a collection of, of the two Air Conflicts games. But because it's a collection, I, I, I collect for it. Uh, let's see. Uh, some of the stuff I've watched your videos on, like Guacamelee or whatever. Yep. yep. So I have that because I didn't know that was was something until it was. Until Those are saw your video. really good games, too. I see. Yeah, you, you're saying that. Uh, a lot of these are re-releases, like L.A. Noir. I had that on the PS3 mm -hmm. a million years ago, but that came out. Mega Man Legacy games, stuff like that. Puyo Puyo Tetris, this is still sealed, and it came with, I have it for the PS4. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to play it on the PS4. The reason I'm not going to open this is it came with a little keychain. Yep, I've so, got that one, too. Yeah, so I'm not going to not going to open that up. Uh, then we go into uh, my Master System collection, which isn't a lot. And the only reason it's not a lot is because the majority of the games I wanted... Never came out in the U.S. Yeah. Came out in Europe. Yep. So i got to be careful. Like, I'm pissed because there's a game, uh, California Games, is, is a PAL game. Mm -hmm. uh, Altered Beast, PAL game. I thought they were U.S. It's hard to tell the difference on Master System games. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I had to go to Wikipedia to figure that out. Then we get into Genesis. Genesis is, again, my second favorite system of all time. We go all the way down. We got the Double Dragons. We got Contra Hardcore here. That's an expensive one, uh, complete at least. Here's Exodus, Journey to the Promised Land, Wisdom Tree Game. Echo the Dolphins. This one's a kind of a, a funny one to find, Echo Jr. Uh, it's, a, it's a Sega Kids Club game. It's kind of hard to find uh, complete, out in the wild at least. All of these hardball games from Alkalade, baseball-wise, those are classic baseball games. Um, we got all the Maddens. Let's see what else we got going on. Mutant League football and hockey. Those are must-haves if you like those types of games there. We go down here. What else we got? Streets of Rage. Two is my favorite of all time. Classic, classic game. Uh, let's see. Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron. Toe Jam and Earl, the first one. Virtua Fighter 2, they got this sealed for, it says $35.99 on here, but that's not what I bought it for. I bought it for $5, brand new, which is cool. It was shitty on the Genesis, I mean, but it's the Genesis. There's not much they could have done with that. The fact that it even came out was cool. It's not 3D. It has 3D backgrounds, but 2D fighting. So, and then you got the, you know, the wrestling games. Any WWF game I'll collect, but when it switched to WWE, I stopped. I never got into WWE with the name change and everything else. 32X uh, collection, there's not a lot of games for the system, and consequently there's not a lot of games I needed for the system. Right. Um, but one of the hardest ones to find, complete and expensive, are, is RBI Baseball 95. Really? Yeah. As ridiculous as it sounds, one of, the, one of the most expensive sports games you can find on the system. Game Gear collection, this is interesting. Oh, any casino game, by the way, I collect for. Anything casino-wise, I will collect. So Caesar's Palace originally came out by Virgin, mm -hmm. while Majesco Entertainment, what they did is they re-released all those games. Yeah. So there's a cover variant. So I have both of those. But as we go down there, um, as we get to the Disney section, I'll show you guys some cover variants of those. Sega CD, Dragon's Lair, huge Dragon's Lair fan. That's why I have those. Any uh, double disc games like Three Ninjas Kickback and mm -hmm. Hook, I have to collect. Final Fight CD, that was an expensive one. I got at a store in Knoxville. And Saturn, as we go up here, we got the three free games. I got that sealed. Uh, those were the games that came with the Saturn when it first released. Yeah. Uh, but then they had its own its own mm -hmm. um, uh, thing. So I had to get that variant of it. As we go over here, we got some Sega arcade stuff, um, handhelds. And then we got GameCom. Now this GameCom here, a lot of people are like, why would you buy a GameCom? Well, it's a piece of gaming history, and I got all of this. These are all sealed, brand new. The system's brand new for 25 bucks. Wow. So I said, I can't yeah. pass that up. Nope. This still has a KB Toy sticker. At one point, it was $50, and it was marked down to $30. Um, but yeah, I can't pass that. I couldn't pass it up. So some of the games, like technically I don't need, would be Centipede. I don't mm. need Frogger. I don't need this. I don't need Resident Evil 2. I don't need... Well, that's it. But uh, the reason I have them is because it came with the system. Right. So why not? I have some UMD PSP videos here. I'm going to try to collect all of those, but I have to differentiate. If anybody's watching this, if you can help me compile a list of, of movies that actually came out in the U.S., because some of these on the back, they're Canadian. And I don't want to have those. Nothing against Canada, but I don't want to have those in my collection. I want everything U.S. released. Uh, Sealed Beat Mania bundle for the PS2. Down here, this still works. This is my original Space Alien. Uh, there are two versions of it. This little green one, and then this tabletop one from Radio Shack. Uh, Buggy Quest was another game I had as a kid. Raceway, Turbo Raceway. Uh, so these are little Radio Shack handhelds. And then I got the Tiger ones that I grew up with. I'm trying to collect every sports Tiger game I can. And uh, any like Ninja Gaiden type game or Double Dragon, as you can see. I don't know if you can get in there. Daytona USA, Virtua Fighter. Then this is just my wall of just garbage handheld stuff, <laughs> retro junk that you yeah. can get a family dollar. Right. I try to collect every variation of it. Um, and then down here I have two more in the box. I have these Game Rider things, which came in handy. I got them yeah. at GameStop. All right, now we get to this. This is a Segascope 3D system. I got this for a hell of a deal. Um, it's brand new in the box. Like, it's never been opened. It's still in its plastic. It's still in its wrapping. The box has been opened, but the system and stuff have never been opened. Um, so I'm pumped about having something like that. 
That up there, the batter up, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I never got to use it as a kid, but I always wanted one. But it was like 50 bucks brand new back then, and wow. I just didn't see the value in it. And from what I heard, it didn't really uh, really uh, work that well. But uh, I got that brand new at the Long Island Retro Video Game Convention for like 10 bucks. So I said, yeah, I'm going to get one of those finally. Uh, 32X in the box. And then here we got some Saturn stuff. Excuse me, yeah, some more Saturn stuff. Sega Ages. It's a classic one from uh, Working Designs. All the Daytona USA games, Fighting Vipers, Fighting Fighters Mega Mix, House of the Dead, In the Hunt's a great running gun. It's like a Contra type of a game. It's like a Metal Slug type of a game, but it's uh, underwater. Uh, you're in a submarine. Uh, so In the Hunt's a game. If you have a Saturn, you've got to collect that. This is pretty interesting. These are rare. I'm trying to pull this out. This is called Lost and Found. There are three of these, and they were at these video game conventions. And this is the second one. There's only 50 made. This is the cheapest of oh, the three. Wow. But the like one in three, I think they're like a 500 on up yeah. complete. But it has like demos and stuff. Huh. Dreamcast is right here. Uh, some notable titles for Dreamcast. We got obviously the uh, the House of the Dead on here. We have. Uh, NBA to the sports games, the NBA 2K franchise, the NFL 2K franchise, Crazy Taxi, um, Power Stone. I've both of them great mm -hmm. fighting games. Hopefully they bring the Capcom brings those back. Shenmue, obviously, uh, Soul Calibur. One of the big graphically to this day still holds up. Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast to this day could beat some fighting games that are out for the PS3 and PS4. We get to Virtual Boy. Uh, not a lot of games for the Virtual Boy, obviously. It's, therefore, not a lot of games I need. Why do I have Galactic Pinball? I have no idea why I have that. I don't think I need it. So, <laughs> but I got the baseball game, the 3D Tetris. For those of you who don't know, 3D Tetris is not 3D Tetris. It's like, it's not Tetris. This is V Tetris. This was only released in Japan. And again, I don't really collect foreign games, but this is the only real Tetris game on the uh, Virtual Boy, so I had to grab it. Uh, 3D Tetris is basically like you're you're putting the blocks in versus up down. It's yep. going inside, and it's just I have no interest in that. But because as a Tetris game, I had to get it. Engage. Do I have an Engage? No. At some point, I'm going to try to get one. I think it was Nokia phone, right, or yep. something. But uh, I have some couple of games that I would normally get for the for systems. I have an MLG game, a college football game. I have a Sonic Engage game over in the Sonic section. Jaguar CD. A couple of Jaguar games. Uh, White Man Can't Jump. I don't know if that has anything to do with the movie or not. But uh, I grabbed that. We have an Atari Lynx. The box has been opened. The system has never been opened. That caught my eye big time. Yeah. It's, I think, the Model 2. This is the the cheapest of the two mm -hmm. models, or the least expensive of the two models. But it's still brand new. Who knows if I'm ever going to open it out of the plastic. I don't know. But, I, again, I'm trying to collect the games that I would need mm -hmm. for the Lynx. Down here we got some 3DO games. These um, demo disc 3DO games, those are expensive, as ridiculous as that may sound. 3DO uh, interactive samplers. Um, let's see what else do I have for the 3DO. Jam it, Gunslinger collection. Anyway, PS1 long box, and as we all go down, I pretty much all the PS1 games that you would think that somebody would have, I have. So, the notable notable titles. Now, here's some hidden gems that you might not know about. Just run those out. Um, I don't know if I can grab them. So, Ninja Shadow of Darkness. Okay. That's by Eidos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hell of a game. Uh, basically, a lot of people don't like it. I liked it. Uh, it was a great game. Basically, it's like a hack and slash type of a game. Mm -hmm. um, Taifu. I'm, I'm going to hold up Taifu because a lot of people don't know about Taifu. Taifu. I've never heard of it. Taifu Wrath of the Tiger is a, is an action adventure game. It's a great game. Who made it? Activision. Great game. Basically, you're this tiger, and you're learning all sorts of kung fu from the different animal masters, and you have to, I forget the story exactly, but you have to save somebody. Is that game hard to find? It shouldn't be. I've never seen it before. It shouldn't be. It, it may be. It's, it may be hard to find on common, but it shouldn't be that expensive. It may be 20 or I paid 20 back then. It's probably the same price now, but it's very well worth the money. I don't know if you consider this a hidden gem. And it's, some of you may have interest in the series, some of you may not. But there were the two games that came out called Bust a Groove. Not hmm. Bust a Move, the puzzle game. Mm -hmm. Bust a Groove. And they're hard to find. The second one especially is expensive. But there are these rhythm games, and just, they're so quirky and so, the songs will get stuck in your head, and the characters are so weird looking. 
There's this one guy called Ham, H-A-M-M, -M, and he's this short, tubby, uh, Spanish-looking dude in the game, and he just dances, and his rolls of fat are dancing with him. It's just, <laughs> check it out, man. You can probably go on YouTube and, and see some video of it, but Bust a Groove. Those are two games that, if you like rhythm-type games and you like weird stuff, you, you ever hear of the show Wallace and Gromit? Yep. All right, well, the same people who did Wallace and Gromit Created this game called Skull Monkeys. I've heard of this one. Okay. Extreme, awesome action platformer. As you get through the game, it gets harder and harder. Uh, music is weird. Everything's weird. They actually have somebody's actual physical head on a, a boss of a body. So it's like a human head on a body. Yeah. And it's real picture of somebody, almost like South Park would do. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, if you can find it's expensive, but if you can find it, this is the biggest hidden gem I think of all on the PS1. Nice. Skull Monkeys. All right. We go into the P. I got a Nomad box, Nomad up there, Saturn, um, and then some. I got a Sega CD. These are, I got a hell of a deal. These were not $110 when I bought them. I think they were half off at GameStop. So I have two Neo Geo minis. So PS3, uh, any game that you think that you would have, I have. Uh, that you would, you know, essential games to have. Dante's Inferno, Castlevania collection. Um, this Capcom collection is pretty cool. Comes with Resident Evil 6, Super Street Fighter 4, uh, Dead Rising 2, Mega Man 10. That's an interesting collection of huh. games. Um, Eco, all the Grand Theft Autos, all the Grand Turismo's, obviously all the sports games, all the Metal Gears that came out, Ninja Gaidens that came out, so nothing really out of the ordinary, uh, everything you'd expect to have. We go down, PS4, um, huge fan of the Yakuza series, um, I haven't played 4 yet on the PS3, I haven't played Dead Souls yet, and of course I haven't played the Yakuza on the PS4, excuse me, Yakuza 4 and Yakuza Dead Souls on the PS3, I haven't played the PS4 Yakuza's yet, but at some point I'm going to. Um, let's see, PS4 games, these are interesting games. They're, they're party games. I'm a, a party game collector, but these are games that you can actually play on your phone, and if you're busy with friends, or you can even do drinking games as far as these go. It's called Knowledge is Power. Huh. It's like a trivia game where you got to guess things about your friends. Yeah. You know, these are pretty cool. They're cheap. I think they're like 6 bucks brand new when I bought them, or 10 bucks brand new when I bought them. Hidden Agenda is another game that you can play co-op if you want on your phone but it's also on the PS4. It's, a, it's like a, a movie game. All right, let's see what else we got. Shenmue 1 and 2. I got a, obviously, Shenmue fan, so I bought both of them on one disc just to have. Uh, Xbox, I really didn't have a lot of games for the original Xbox because I ended up steering towards PS2, even though I wanted Xbox graphically was better than the mm -hmm. PS2. Uh, but some of the games that were exclusive to the Xbox that I have, like House of the Dead 3, Magic the Gathering Battle Mage, or Battle... Uh, Battlegrounds. When I was growing up, I got into Magic um, around the time of Mirage, I think I stopped collecting. Uh, but any Magic the Gathering kind of game, I have to get. Uh, as we go down here, some of the other ones that are pretty cool to have. Toe Jam and Earl 3 on the Xbox. Uh, Shenmue 2 on the Xbox. 360 Dreamcast Collection is pretty cool. Um, pretty cool to have. A couple of, like, I think Space Channel 5 is on here, Crazy Taxi's on here. So get that for the 360 if you're a 360 collector. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Huh. Let's see, more uh, Konami Classics. I have Volume 2. I'm missing Volume 1. Those are must-haves if you're a Konami fan and you're uh, that sort of deal. Table Tennis is actually a pretty cool ping-pong game uh, by Rockstar. It's mm -hmm. actually pretty good. Um, so I recommend getting that. All the Burger King games, surprisingly, are not that horrible. Um, Sneak King is a weird game, but it's actually a stealth game. It's pretty pretty fun. Uh, Pocket Bike Racer is a pretty good racing game. I think the worst of the three is um, the other one. Now these are, I'm trying to collect every Game Boy Advance uh, video game that came for the Game Boy Advance, so I just threw, these over, threw those over there. Now we get to the Disney, Disney collection. Okay, every Disney game ever from Nintendo on up I'm trying to find, as well as Tiger Electronic or any handheld games. Like this is Mickey Mouse Yahtzee, which was not done by Tiger, it was done by, I don't know who this was, Hasbro. Any Disney uh, game I can find, I'm going to grab. Some of the notable, notable titles, DuckTales and DuckTales 2 for the Game Boy, Aladdin for the Game Boy, Darkwing Duck for the Game Boy, 
Uh, this is a rare one, Maui Mallard and Cold Shadow. It's like a Donald Duck, I think, uh, detective or whatever. Some of these are sealed, like Pinocchio sealed. And then we get into Game Boy Color. Game Boy Color was the beginning of the end of shovelware. Mm -hmm. Doug's big game. Nobody ever needed to play that. <laughs> Uh, then we get to Game Boy Advance, and that's where it really falls apart. Cheetah Girls, yeah. Disney Princess, right? Uh, you know, Chicken Little, Cinderella, Princess something or other, Herbie. We go down into 3DS, and then we have the PS1 Disney games. We have the Game Gear Disney games. These here, I don't have a place for them. These are just plug and plays. Double Dragon, Mega Man 2, and WWF Steel Cage. We go right over here, and you got more in. You got the NES Disney games. Going into Super Nintendo N64 Genesis. This is the Magical Tetris Challenge that I want to play. Right here. This is from Capcom. And it also came out for the Game Boy Color. But, um... Is that hard to find? On eBay, it's yeah. easy to find. In the yeah. wild, it's impossible to yeah. find. But yeah, I mean, it's Disney. It's a Disney story with, with, uh, with Tetris. Genesis, Mickey Mania on the, on the Sega CD, PS2, GameCube, uh, Mickey, uh, Disney games, uh, PS3, Wii, the whole, you know the drill. And then down here, as we get down here, we're going into the movies and TV shows that came out, that games came out with. I think this is my favorite section of your game room, by the way. Yeah, this is, I'm still not even close to done. <laughs> so, you got Alien vs. Predator, all the Alien games that came out. I'll just read off some some shows and just know that I'm trying to collect every game for, for that for that series. Adventures of Mighty Max was a cartoon growing up when I was a kid. I love that cartoon. It was an awesome cartoon. Yes, it was. And at some point I want to be able to find a collection of the, of the, the whole set so I can watch and see what happens at the end because I don't know what happened, obviously. Because, you know, when you were a kid you saw as much as you could, mm -hmm. but, you know, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't. I actually missed the end, too. Yeah, I have no end. idea how it ended, yeah. if, it, if it even did end. Uh, so we got Aliens, we got uh, Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, Animaniacs, Back to the Future, Battleship. Yes, Battleship. So I have Battleship games, and then the movie came out. The games have nothing to do with the movie. Yeah. Except the PS3 one, I think it does. Uh, but the, all the other ones before, just regular Battleship. Born Identity, the Born Trilogy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I have the Buffy the Vampire Slayer sealed, the complete DVD set, and then all the games. Captain Planet for the NES. Casper, the Friendly Ghost. And I even have the Casper handheld here. As we go here, we got Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Chronicles of Riddick, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Clue, CSI, Die Hard. I have the Die Hard Arcade for the Saturn, and Die Hard Trilogy for the, both the PS1 and Saturn. Falling Skies was a Steven Spielberg uh, show on TNT. Uh, the only reason I have it is because they came out with a video game, Falling Skies, for the PS3 and 360. So, Family Guy, Fast and the Furious, uh, Fifth Element, Fight Club, Fist of the North Star, not a huge anime fan, but had this growing up as a kid, mm -hmm. and because I have it, I now have to collect all the Fist of the North Star games. Mm -hmm. From what I've heard, though, is these Fist of the North Stars are more of a, a, a beat-em-up mm -hmm. than this was a horrible fighting game. I mean, terrible. Futurama, great game, actually, for the PS2. It was really good, also expensive and hard to find. Complete. So I got the Ghostbusters games. Some of these are hard to, uh, they're, you know, up there in price complete. Ghostbusters for the NES, Genesis even. Yep. Game Boy of the real Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 for the Game Boy. G.I. Joe, Godfather, uh, Godzilla, Hercules, Legendary Journeys. That's a rare one to find for the N64 complete. Not saying it's a good game, it's just hard to find. Hook, Highlander, huge Highlander fan. Uh, and I had to get the, the Jaguar CD right there, I, the long box. Spent a fortune on it because it's hard to find in a long box form. Yeah. You can find the CD in its case, but not the long box. I had to get the long box version. Hudson Hawk. Ugh, I had Hudson Hawk for the Game Boy, so I had to buy the movie and actually watch it. It's an okay movie with Bruce Willis. Nothing to write home about. Hunt for Red October, uh, Independence Day, Indiana Jones. Um, and then Jurassic Park, huge Jurassic Park fan. Not so much the last few movies, Jurassic World. Not really, a f I mean, they're okay, but nothing, to me, Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World was mm -hmm. the best of the three. The uh, best of any of them. Uh, Land Before Time is kind of ridiculous, but yes, I grew up watching Land Before Time. I so, did too. I uh, had the video games for them. I came out with them. 
Looney Tunes, anything Looney Tunes I have to collect, well here's Law & Order, so that's going to be a, a you know what, trying to collect all the DVDs for Law & Order, it's going to be expensive, just the DVDs alone. Really? Just 20 seasons of it. Yeah. Uh, right up here, just to give you guys an idea, we got Virtual Boy System complete in box, we got the 3DO, Panasonic 3DO, uh, Play PS1, PS2, PS Classic, you got two of those because they were cheap, uh, still unopened, I'm uh, probably never going to open them because what, what's not worth it from what I've been told. PS3, PS4, a uh, little PS3 bundle for sports. But as we go back down here, we got, you know, like Bugs Bunny, Crazy Castle, any Looney Tunes game. So Daffy Duck for the Game Boy is kind of hard to find. Um, Tasmania, this whole bit. You know, you got Sylvester and Tweety, you got, you know, Looney Tunes racing and all that stuff. Then we get into Men in Black. Uh, Power Rangers, huge Power Rangers fan. I think every kid was, and if you weren't, you're, you know, you, you, let's be honest with ourselves, you were. <laughs> I remember growing up as a kid, I would always daydream about, mm -hmm. this is going to sound ridiculous, right? And well, you were a weirdo, but I would be in class and be the hottest girl in the school, right? And she'd be in my class. And I daydream about me getting beamed down by Zordon with her, like three <laughs> nerds. And I had to win her heart because yeah. they were nerds, you know what I mean? So that's what I used to daydream about all the time. I got the Power Rangers handhelds. This is a rare one to find for the SNES, Battle Racers. Anyway, we go from there to Mission Impossible. Minority Report, The Mummy, Napoleon Dynamite, they made a game for the PSP, and DS, it sucks. <laughs> Movie's great, game sucks, which, you, you know, you're not expecting a classic, but still. NCIS, anything to do with Peanuts, like Snoopy mm -hmm. and Charlie Brown. Pink Panther, uh, Predator, Popeye, Rambo, Rocky, Robocop, Ren and Stimpy, Scorpion King, Scarface, Sherlock Holmes, The Shield. Great TV series. They made a game for the PS2. Silent Hill, The Simpsons. Got a whole bunch of Simpsons games here. This one is very expensive for the Game Boy. It's Itchy and Scratchy Mini Golf. Mini Golf Madness. That's a tough one to find, and it's an expensive one to find if you can find it complete. But again, don't be like me. You don't have to go complete. I just pre per personally prefer it. South Park games, you got the, um, the collector's editions down there. Star Trek. Every Star Trek game I'm trying to get, which I'm close, I think I'm one or two away. And then Star Wars. I think I have every Star Wars game. If I'm missing one, let me know in the comments, in his comments section below, so I can uh, figure that out. Up here we have a Gran Turismo 5 uh, Collector's Edition, NBA 2K13 Collector's Edition, regular Xbox 360, Xbox One, we'll get to this in a minute. More Star Wars, then we get into Street Fighter, Swamp Thing. Turtles, huge Turtles fan. Yeah, me too. And then right up here we got Tom and Jerry, Tiny Toon Adventures, but Tom and Jerry, classic cartoons. Um, huge Tom and Jerry fan. At some point I want to try to find every Tom and Jerry ever. Top Gun, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, VR Troopers, Can't Wait. It was an underrated Saban series. It was like a knockoff on the Power Rangers, kind of, but it was, it was decent in its own right. But it just couldn't compete with Power Rangers, yeah. so it only lasted. Xena. Uh, surprisingly enough, the PS1 game is a pretty good adventure game. The N64 game is a fighting game, but the PS1 game is a pretty good adventure game. And then huge X-Files fan, like, to no end. So I have the X-Files games. Uh, Young Indiana Jones. All right, so now we're up here. We got some Kingdom... We got an Xbox One regular. And then the Project Scorpio. I pre-ordered that. It has the Project Scorpio edition. It's unopened. Haven't had time to play it. Haven't had time to do anything. But uh, Kingdom Hearts stuff, and then down here we got more Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts, again, great series. Three, a lot of you may agree or disagree with me. I hated it. I waited 17 years. I despise three. However, with all the ending craziness that happened with the secret movies, Kingdom Hearts 4 looks to be like it's going to be bananas. So we'll see what happens, but that'll get released when I'm 50. So you think they're going to do a four? Oh, they're definitely yeah. going to do a four. But it's, I mean, it took 17 years between two and three. Yeah. So imagine how long it's going to take between three and four. That's right. a running joke. <laughs> We're going to be retired in an old folks home in four. Yeah. All right. One of my holy grails of a collection, for me at least personally, is my having my own MK2 arcade machine. Um, and it works. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, MK2, it works. This Virtua Fighter, mm -hmm. okay, the store was closing in Sevierville. Uh, and uh, they, they downgraded, they used to have video games and card games and stuff, like Dungeons and Dragons or whatever mm -hmm. these people are playing. But they downgraded, got rid of all the video games. I got this for 800 bucks. Uh, it's not worth 800 bucks. I'm a huge Virtua Fighter fan. That's one fighting game series I forgot to mention. 
Um, but it still works. It's just the screen's a little bit uh, funny. Yeah. This here is a Matahari pinball machine. The only reason I have this is because growing up, before my parents got divorced, growing up, we, my dad had this, and he used to play this all the time. And I used to watch him play it downstairs in the basement. And then, when, you know, my parents got divorced when I was six, and uh, I don't know what happened to it. I think but when my mom sold our house, whoever the buyer was got the pinball machine. So, a few years ago, I wanted to surprise my dad with something cool, and I tried to track one of these down, and I finally found one out in California, and they refurbished it and everything. It cost a fortune. Uh, so I have a video on my YouTube channel of him playing it at my old house. Oh, nice. Uh, and it, was, it was a cool thing. My dad, was, I, I think, wanted to cry, mm -hmm. but not cry because he was touched. Yeah. Cry because it, I found out later it brought back terrible memories. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, but yeah, he wasn't, he was, he was, he, I think he got what I was trying to do, but he wasn't yeah. a fan of it. Oh, uh, okay. I got you. Um, and then right over here, if you want to go into the little cubby hole in there, that's my whole Assassin's Creed getup. Uh, Assassin's Creed, we got, um, uh, but Assassin's Creed, we got every Assassin's Creed game. I think I have a Monster Energy drink in there with an Assassin's Creed logo on it. I have the PS Vita with the Assassin's Creed bundle that came out. All the books, all the magazines, all the comic books, all the everything that you can get, figurines. Wow. Then we have the Dead or Alive series down there, followed by God of War, mm -hmm. God of War Collector's Edition. And then down here, I think I have some AE, I don't know if they're AES games or what they are. I mean, you can take a look at them later. I know they go into a I know they go into the uh, the arc the, like the SNK arcade machines or not SNK uh, Neo G, whatever they are but you'll take a look at I don't know if you can see them you know what I've seen those Samurai before. Showdown yeah. it's an MVS oh yeah Samurai Showdown Art of Fighting you know what I think I bet uh, Jerry would probably know what those are and Fatal Fury Special Jerry if you're watching this let us know in the comments down below if you know what those are and uh, and then right over here last but not least we got. I had a, to get more room. I had to buy these. I finally found these things online. They're pretty cool. You got to buy the shelving separate, but they're uh, you can only get them shipped to you too. You can't just go to a store and buy them. Uh, I'll try to find the website. If anybody's interested in it, I'll just put the link, uh, or I'll give him the link to put in his his channel. Sounds good. But uh, basically, yeah. So I have all my Wii games in here. I got this Madden and NHL two-in-one plug-and-play. I got this uh, Genesis Flashback which is a pile of crap, but I try to collect every flashback I can. I'm pumped. A few days from now, the, uh, well, when you guys are watching this, it may already have been, been released, but the Genesis Mini comes out. Yeah, that's looking, those, looking pretty good. Two of those pre-ordered. But I got some Wii games, PS2, and all around. GameCube over here. Uh, we got Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes, The Legend of Zelda, the Four, Fantasy Star, Pac-Man, of course. And then um, we go into PS2 right over here into PSP. So, I'm a huge PSP collector, got a lot of them. I think I'm a few away from being done finally. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then in that bin over there, we got some PC games. I used to work for GameShark, reviewing games when the website was up. And uh, I have a lot of PC games I got from there. But if you're a PC game guy, and you're a sports guy, I'm going to give you a couple of sports franchises to try to look into. I don't know if they'll work now, I don't know how PCs work. These games came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, so figure it out if you're a PC guy. But Sierra Sports mm -hmm. came out with a series called Front Page, Front Page Sports, and they had two series, football and baseball. And very, very, very bare-bones games, graphically, but statistically, if you're into stats and you're into multiple seasons and all that mm -hmm. stuff, Pick those games up. You can probably find them for cheap. And then as ridiculous as this is going to sound, the best baseball game I have ever played, hands down, was for the PC. And it's from 3DO, and it's Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2002. Hmm. And you could play a game in 45 minutes. You could, I mean, the game was just, I, I can't describe it, how amazing it is. Graphically, it was great. Easy to play, fluid. Uh, you could, you know, for you could mod the stadiums to look how you wanted them to look. Um, it's a just a great game, one of the best, most fun baseball games I've played, and I'm a simulating baseball kind of guy. So there you have it, folks. Our interview and game room tour with Andy. Uh, Andy, man, thanks again for letting me do this. I really appreciate it. Uh, had a blast. Just amazing game room, amazing collection. Like I said, the best I've seen so far. Most impressive, especially the fact that all of your games are complete. That right there in of itself is very impressive. 
and that's no small feat. I mean, I know how hard that is to do. It, it's definitely hard. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button and let us know in the comments down below if you have any additional questions for Andy. I'm sure he'd be glad to go out there and uh, in the comments and answer any additional questions that you may have. Also, let us know what you think about his collection. If you have any questions about anything in his collection, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer that. And uh, let us know what you think about his, his collection because it is definitely impressive. And again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button so that you can join the Retro Wolf family. Until next time, keep playing games and having a good time, and we will see you all in the next video. That's the beautiful. guy painted, and it's numbered on the bottom here. This is number five of five. Wow. Okay. And oh, oh, that just happened yeah, on it camera. Yeah, just happened. There oh you go. shit. I think I'm okay. Did anything fall off? Well, just paint. A little bit of. Oh, this. Look at that. Oh man. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, maybe you shouldn't pick up the other ones. Butterfingers. That's terrible. All right. <laughs>